bumpy ride. But today's the day to cash in. Number one steel. Cast iron, number one, same price. see I got that boiler in the back it's from the uh, 1950s so um, guy called me up he's uh, a plumber and he had uh, dismantled it on those ones they have like a big long big long rod that goes through the whole thing holds all those slabs together and, uh, yeah, it was in the basement. It was, uh, still in action, heating a, uh, three-family home, three different floors, and, uh, someone bought the building to, uh, redo it, so they decided to, uh, put a new, whole new furnace system in there, so, um, he needed that one out of there. So it wasn't too bad. I mean, each one of those slabs is pretty heavy. I would say, you know, probably uh, maybe a, the weight of a Turbo 400 transmission each. Uh, but being tall and long, I was able to just take my my two-wheel dolly and uh, get them up out of there. They had a, a ramp made in the, coming out of the basement, so there was no stairs. So it wasn't too bad, it was still a bit of a job, but it was only five minutes away from me, so, and the guy had a pile of copper, but, um, I said, man, you got, you're saving the good stuff, huh? He said, no, I don't scrap it, he said, but, he said, when I do, when I do all the new plumbing, I want to make sure that I don't need any of these pieces, because some of them were, like, new, that they had just replaced, so. He's going to try to reuse some of the copper and uh, the rest of it. He said he's going to call me and have me come pick it up when he's done. So I gave him my card and stuff. And uh, hopefully I get that. I don't have much copper right now, so I'm not going to bother with any of that kind of stuff. You know, aluminum, copper. I, don't, I only have, like, a couple of batteries. And, um, This, uh, I already had one boiler in the corner of the truck right here. You've seen that. Just a regular small one, but heavy. And uh, that's all cast iron. It's all stripped. That had a copper coil in it. And this uh, old one had a copper coil too, which is nice. Looks like a big coil spring, but those are pretty heavy. And they're all, usually you get number one copper price for them. So that's pretty good. Um, but... So I had that one boiler in there, and then I added that the slabs from that guy's and any sort of uh, light iron I've just been throwing in the trailer. That's pretty full too, but uh, that's um, pretty snowed in at this point. I could probably get it out if I wanted to, but it's really not a point in doing it right now. It's probably going to sit there till some of the snow melts or we get closer to springtime, a couple of months anyway. Not too worried about it. It's not a lot of money, but like I said, all the little pieces of uh, light that I get, whatever stupid little things, I'll just throw in there. And uh, so I got, um, I had that in here, and then another guy threw in a like the rear 
uh, mount for like a uh, like a gooseneck uh, tow hitch for the truck, you know. Uh, it bolts to the frame of like a truck in the back, right in the middle of the bed, and it just has a ball. That's uh, for like a gooseneck trailer for usually like horses and farm stuff like that, or even uh, some campers. Um, so you threw that in the other day, and it seems like that's kind of that kind of tipped me over the edge on this thing. I'm dead nuts on the suspension. So, got my welded uh, leaf spring shackle still holding on, and, uh, you know, the whole bed, you know that story anyway, but, um, I'm going to take a ride and cash this in, it's all uh, number one, so... top her off. Might go for a good ride.
interstate today, and the uh, main reason for that is you can see the old farm truck sitting pretty low in the back, and it's not too bad though, as long as you're on flat ground. It's uh, it's kind of like riding a lowered vehicle that you can cut the springs or you know a cheap way of. Uh, getting it down on the ground. It's kind of what it feels like when you hit a bump. There's just no, uh, no suspension in the back at all. This much weight. No coffee, no food, no. Nah. It's, uh, I had a couple, a couple coffees this morning at home while I was surfing the old internet and uh, add an English muffin just butter on it that's it that's all I really need so far but I'm gonna go to that same scrapyard it's about an hour away from me I did kind of look around a little bit for the wire 
only I could keep track of, you know, the last time I got gas and where I've driven. But sometimes you lose track. And like today was a good day because I went to top it off and it only took 10 bucks. Well, four gallons or something like that. things can affect big too. 
it like it's called an old cell because back in the day that was the thing to do. You get a set of hijackers. You know, they called them. I think Gabriel was the company and they made hijackers. They gave you a cool sticker with it. <coughs> I believe it was a picture of a rabbit. But basically a shock to replace your stock shocks that had airlines going to them. And usually you would have a have the airline come out right at like the back at your rear bumper. So if you're gonna haul something or you just wanted to jack it up real high for a day, um, you could pump them up, put like 80, 100 pounds of air in these things, have your car or truck sitting like that. So this truck had those and I tried to put air a few times in them. And uh, I swear the truck didn't move, didn't even budge. I didn't hear any leaking coming out, but just didn't do anything. Just put air in it. So, you know, for a half ton truck, it didn't seem too bad uh, as far as like, loading stuff up. It seemed to handle the weight pretty good, is what I'm saying. But, After owning it for a couple of years, I uh, was I was hauling down like all my good stuff right before winter. And I had AC compressors, and, uh, you know, barrels of copper and batteries, and I mean a lot of stuff in the bed of this. And then I hooked up the trailer. That had I had like a load of light iron in it and stuff, which is pretty heavy. But I heard a, a big loud bang and I broke the leaf spring shack on this side. Must have been, you know, a little bit rusty because it's weird because the other side's not rusty at all. But uh, must have had a crack in it, stress crack, and it let go. So spring went right up into the bed so the whole the whole truck was kind of wacky but I ended up driving it like that anyway went and scrapped my stuff um, I got some looks that day for how it you know the whole truck but it actually didn't ride too terrible it just uh it just made it go like this but anyway after that just for a quick fix until I got a shackle <coughs> I showed you in the back there real quick. I uh, took a big first. I jacked up the truck so the spring was back where it goes, and I just stitched it with the welder back together. Then I put that big slab of metal over it, welded the shit out of that. I mean, I burned it. I turned that welder up and I burned it on. The other side, nothing's holding the other side of the shackle. Just one side. So. A lot of people that I know that I stop by and get scrapped from different guys, they get a laugh out of it. Are you still running that? So it became kind of a running joke to see how long it would last. So I'm still I'm still going with it. But at the same time that I did that, I had a set of uh, gas shocks, just any old factory shocks. Uh, that someone gave me and they were like shiny black like someone put them on and then took them right off for some reason but I think that they go to like a newer truck you know 2000 Chevy <coughs> but looking at them sitting there and they pretty much look the same so I ended up ripping the air shocks out of this thing and I throw this, and I cut all the lines, rip.
bushings to make them work, which wasn't that bad, but I had to mess around. I had to go get a step drill bit and everything. So it turned into a project. And when they didn't work, I thought about going out to the parts store and getting just uh, some regular shocks. But they didn't have nothing in stock, and the ones they did were too expensive. And I didn't have enough money that day, so now here I am with a truck with no shocks in it. So I had no choice but to make those work. And uh, so I put them in, and I figured maybe I'll, you know, having air shocks that don't work at all, and then putting gas shocks in that are pretty much new, maybe I will benefit from it. But in this case, I screwed myself. Because I didn't benefit from it. The shocks did absolutely nothing for me. It's, I might as well not even have shocks in it. They're just nothing. There's nothing to them. And come to find out, those air shocks were working. Because when I was taking them out, you know, it was a general pain in the ass to take them out because the bolts were rusty and where they were, the exhaust was in the way. So I unbolted them and then I just took the shock and yanked it, you know, right off the, the plastic airlines that go to them. And what do you think happened when I yanked that off? <laughs> a bunch of air came out. So those air shocks had air in them. And they were working. They were actually doing something for me. And uh, holding the truck up a decent amount in the back. But I wasn't about to put them back in. And then get, then I would have had to get a new plastic airline kit. When they only worked half-assed. I mean, they took a little bit of air. It was probably... 20 pounds of air in them, but it was still something. They wouldn't take any more air. Um, but so that's a life lesson right there. I don't know what the lesson is, but maybe do a little more investigation on what you got before you just start ripping things apart. But in this case, I screwed myself because now I got shitty shocks and half-ass shackle, which those aren't as cheap as I thought to buy new, so that's it. I'm just getting by with what I got right now. And the goal would be to, well, there's a couple of different choices I got. One would be not out of the question would be to go buy brand new leaf springs that are heavy duty, which I'm not going to be spending the money. Plus, those are going to be a fight to get off. I have, I'd have to get the torches going and stuff. Huge job. But the next thing would be to uh, buy a new set of air shocks, which are about ninety dollars from the parts store down the street. And uh, I could put new air shocks in there and pump them up. And, you know, be all set. Or I can get airbags from the back. Uh, an airbag kit is about $300 for this. And then you can fill those right up, like 100, 150 pounds of air or something. And, uh, you know, you can really lift the back up.
talk about right on 1600 pounds 55 cents a pound number one 88 bucks and a check more than 50 gotta write you a check oh well and we celebrate our victory of I don't know number one scrap metal leads to everything bagel toasted with a really overcooked sausage egg and cheese we got some hash browns to go along uh, got a double order usually you just get like a few but looks like they gave us uh, a little double order I love these little things It's all about the cheese. It's that fake, salty, processed cheese that they put on there. That's what you get addicted to. That taste of it. It's after lunchtime, so you got a bagel or something. Been sitting there all morning. So it serves me right. It's a little stale. But after unloading all that metal myself, it's not too bad when the, you know when you That place advertises we unload everything for you. You don't you just pull in and we unload it. They got magnets and grapplers and everything. But every time there's no one around. Guys hiding somewhere. Or there's some excuse on why they can't do it. So, we got it out of there. It's a lot easier to unload than it is to uh, get that stuff in the truck. Probably saying, could have used the dually, put the number one in there, and then towed the trailer. Made one big cash in. I don't really like taking the dually to the scrapyard. Just because whatever truck you take to the scrapyard always seems to get beat up, you know, on the body and stuff. And I really like that truck. I don't really like to uh, bang it up too much, but you never know when that guy's gonna all of a sudden jump out of somewhere and take that big magnet and, or a grappler and try to pick that stuff out of your truck. And sometimes you don't even want them to, but when you do want them to, you don't show. So,
this thing's already all beat up. You ain't gonna find a dually bed. You ain't gonna be able to afford one anyway. So. These, uh, these hash browns, they got like a little, little like zest to them or something, whatever, uh, seasoning they put on there. It's addicting, that taste, to me anyway. You know, for food from Dunkin' Donuts, it's pretty good. It's like a perfect crisp on the outside and uh, like soft potato on the inside. You almost wish you had something to dip them in. They almost taste deep fried, but... They don't have no deep fryer in Dunkin' Donuts and all that. It's cold out, but you gotta have nice coffee. You have hot coffee in the morning. You gotta have that, but when you're eating food and stuff. You need something cold, wash it down, you know. was uh, $9.04 for my meal. Take that off my profit for the day. Can't go wrong with that. Well, the long video probably pretty much it for the day I knew you'd keep watching See you out there on the streets.